So my story is not funny at all in that sense, but it's got uh, some stuff that I just remembered and I wanted to share with you all. So it was 1995 and I was on radio. I was in Delhi and as I told you all before, I decided that I had a face that was made for radio. So I was like, fine, I'm going to go yet on the radio. And um, you had a voice, the voice connected with people. I don't know how many of you have been inside a radio station. But if, if in, any of you ever went to Yuvavani and took part in those shows, you had two spool machines, one tape deck that was locked because you were only given the key if you could give them a reason to put it on. And in between, there were two mics. The person who used to sit outside the station officer was the guy who used to come before and announce saying, you're listening to 102.6 FM. <laughs> and every time you turn that, he said, aise hi bolna. <laughs> and I used to keep wondering, you know, where was Sushma Suraj in those days? Because she would have banned everything. Um, I was on and while everybody else used to do these shows where they were, they were just like, you know, you see disc jockeys, disc jockeys with spools. We had spools, we'd move them around and we would find that perfect point, that perfect spot where the song would play. And suddenly we turn and say, Chinch Popli say, Abhi abhi request aai hai, hamare special dost ki. Ji ha vena bhaiyo, aapke liye agla gana. And we would do our Amin Se Amini number, it would work. The song would play perfectly. We would actually have a, have a betting score. We would actually have a betting thing where we would turn and say, if you got the song at the beat you wanted, you would get like one rupee. Yeah, bets were small, but bets were good. We used to do all of that. But I was unique. I had one more thing that nobody else had. I had a pager. Yes. For those of you who don't know what a pager is, it's your mobile phone which falls down, no button works. <laughs> except the answer and you know, the red and the green button and the screen. That's it, nothing else. So you could send messages. You would call a number and try and fit a message. Yeah, you would try and do that particular thing, saying that, you know, like, so, so, so one of the famous jokes we'd heard at that point in time was this guy who actually goes on and calls that service and turns and says, he knows he's got just limited a number of characters, so he calls and says, Ji sare friends ko message de dijega ki banta dead, we have the chautha on this date. Said, sir, abhi aapke paas Dust character baki hai. Acha, banta dead, chotha on this date, Maruti for sale. <laughs> so you, know, you used to try and fit everything into that pager, but we would all try and do it. And, and I was, I had this pager, I had the power of the pager. So I did a dial in show. You didn't have delay, which meant that whatever went on air went on live. It went on instantly. It was death if you got it wrong, but if you got it right, you were God. And there I was. And I had, a, I had a Monica, I had a nickname on radio. I was called The Voice. Now I look back and say The Voice would be called The Voice. I mean, like, you know, what, a, what is that a name at all? But those days sounded really cool, you know. This is The Voice of The Voice. And I used to love saying that. And you know, I'll tell you what, I made a profession of lying to people because radio jockeys lie. We lie, we lie, we lie, we lie. Oh, you like that song? It's my favorite too. Here it is, just for you. Yeah? Oh, oh, what a beautiful morning you're having right now. It's absolutely fantastic. Hope you have a great day. Get off my phone. I'm waiting for the next caller. Yeah, we'd have all of this. We just keep lying. And you start believing all these lies. You, you start thinking that in that dial in R, your God, you control everything that happens. And then one day, on my pager, my pager beeped, and on it was a message. And I looked and I said, hey, another hot girl in Delhi. You've got to wait your turn, you know. And it beeped again. And I picked it up. And I read the message and it said, why do you lie so much? I said, great way of getting my attention. Let's call this number and I'm going to rip this person apart on here. And I dialed the person and I dialed the number and I pick up the, the and I dial and the phone's on the other end and this girl picks up and I'm like, uh, hi. So you don't like what we say, do you? She says, why do you all lie so much? And I said, uh, uh, I just didn't have words. And she turned and said, you know, everybody lies. You all lie. The government lies. The army lies. You guys lie. And I said, okay, give her some time. Just let her get it off. You know, maybe bad day of the month. And you know, you're, you're, you're like that. You're sitting in the studios thinking something, saying something. And suddenly she turned and said, she said, you know, they lied to my brother. They lied to him when they sent him to Siachin. They lied to him when they said, he's going to go and defend India. They lied to him when they said, give your life for your country. They lied for him when they said, you are going to make a difference. Because he died in Siachin, but he didn't die from a bullet. He died from gangrene. And you know, because of that, he won't even get some fancy medal. He just died because of gangrene. And I didn't know what to say to her. 
Because he said, you know, I want to end these lies. I want to end these lies tonight. And I knew I was talking to someone who, if I put the phone down at that moment, is most probably going to end their life. And I know that what I will say will be perceived as a lie. So what do I do? And then I look and I have this pager. And I said, maybe it's not me. Maybe it's the people on the other side of this pager and let me get out to these people. And I said, if any of you thinks that there is something you can say to this girl to change her life right now, do it. And for a while there is silence. And I, that silence was like a flat line. You know that flat line that happens in an ECG? You see that flat line in all these Grey's Anatomy, etc. It was like a flat line. And suddenly a beep happened. And the first person, my regular callers used to be horny jarts, desperate people from GK, three people sitting for the IAS in a room shared by all three, all those kind of people. Suddenly there were people, real people saying, hey, you got a brother out here. My number is so-and-so, you can call me. Somebody else, hey, life isn't so bad. And each and every message, beep, and I would read it. Beep, and I would read it. Beep, and I would read it. But I didn't say anything myself because I thought everything I would say would still be a lie. And I suddenly turned and said, are you there? And she said, yes, I am. And I said, do you read books? She said, yes. I said, well, these are not my words. These are Hemingway. And he said, the world is a cruel place. It makes and breaks a lot of people, and some are strong in the broken places. And I didn't go on because after that it actually says that the very strong, it breaks and shatters. But I just stopped right there and I said, that's how I feel right now. And I just read a book by Vikram Seth at that time and I said, I'm going to end this with something special and if it connects with you, page me back after the show because we'd stopped the line at the end of the show. And I put my song on because I knew the perfect song for that moment. I knew the cue and I read from memory because some things I remember and they are not lies. It was Vikram Seth, and this is what he said. He said, all you who sleep tonight, far from the ones you love, no hands to left or right and emptiness above, know you're not alone, the whole world shares your tears, some for just a day or two, and some for all their years. And as I said that, I pressed play. And the song began in the background. And I said, this is for you. This was the song. And it played. And it played, and it played. And as the show got over, I left the studio and I moved on. And I waited for my pager to page like never before. And I looked at it and there was that one page on it. But she said, thank you for tonight. It's wonderful to know that the world doesn't lie. You too could do with some of the truth. And that's the biggest lesson I ever learned on radio. Thank you.